Welcome back to my channel, Strikers. Season 2 is finally here, and it has been a blast. I just really wanted to take my time to enjoy it and really test it out and get my thoughts and feelings out before I posted a video on it. So that's why this video is so late. But I'll probably do this with every update or any change because I always want to explore it before I talk about it. I like to know what I'm talking about for the most part before I say something. So I just wrote some cliff notes. This is going to be mostly off script video talking about my feelings about season two and the future of the game. So Kazan, the new character, has been a joy. The, I love Kazan. His kit's amazing. Coming from League of Legends, um, and anybody coming from League is going to have a significant advantage on him due to the fact that he has multiple abilities. Like, we're just used to it. Uh, it is something that is not unique to uh, League players. We have Elise and Nidalee and other characters that change. And so um, myself and a few others that I know who played picked up on him really fast. And I think he's a great addition to the game. And I think he breathes life into the game in a way that the other strikers don't. A lot of people think he's really OP, but in my opinion, they just need to nerf his damage down slightly. I don't, I don't think he needs a lot of adjustment. He just needs slight changes and he'll be totally fine. His look is amazing, his kit is amazing. He doesn't have an ability, this is why he's balanced, is he doesn't get an ultimate, you know? Everybody's got some form of game-changing ability. Um, Estelle's ult is oppressively wide and will take over a huge portion of the map, forcing you to walk with the core first. It can provide significant pressure. Uh, Vice will totally cancel out one section. Luna forces you to blow and evade or die, like, you know, stuff like that. And Kazan doesn't have that. He has really consistent abilities. He has a lot of them. I, I honestly believe that his strength is in his strike. That poking strike is so powerful. The higher up you go and the more like macro and micro they utilize, that poke um, from his primary strike is just so insane. Uh, and his crooked leverage because you can lose a strike war and still hook back. And He's just an all around amazing character. I want to see a lot of characters like him. I don't think he breaks the game. I don't think that his kit makes others insignificant because it really doesn't. It's just overall, I think he's a great character and I want to see a lot more like him and like Finny. They're very unique and very cool. The Summer Splash event came with this little slice of life game, which you see that I have completed all of. And I have to say, initially as a 31 year old man, I was not impressed. I was not, I was not happy with, I'm not, not happy. I didn't mind. I knew I wasn't the target audience and it was, I was cringy. But as I played through uh, and I actually got to explore all the different characters, I actually learned to love the event and I got addicted to reading all the lore as a lore guy and it was a blast. And so I reached out. I'm going to keep everybody anonymous for now until they tell me, you know, that I'm like an official partner and can say whatever. I, I reached out to some people and I was told that while the event itself is obviously not canonical, their personalities, you know, the way that X talks with you uh, about his routines and the four X's and his personality when, um, when reacting to, there's a part where Juno accidentally smears ice cream on his massive bulge. And I wish, I, I, actually I don't wish I was making this up. I'm so glad this is in the game because there's a lot of stuff like that that's so funny. And it shows the dev team has a sense of humor. They don't take it way too seriously and I like that because that means events in the future will be a blast. And this was great. The Juno and the X stories were by far my favorite. Um, the Asher and the uh, Estelle ones were straight up like clickbait, thirst trap, and but they were done tastefully. I enjoyed my time with those two. Um, Dubu's was great. I love the answers that you had as options for Dubu's. It was wholesome and cute. And actually, I found that Juliet's was the most boring to me. It's a whole volleyball scene, and I won't get into it because it's the longest. Uh, and I, it's all right. I liked it. Yeah, it's cool. You can earn titles. There's hidden titles in this, so keep an eye out. Uh, try. I'm just going to say try and 100% them all. And uh, there's a lot of titles that came along with the event. And so complementing the summer theme, of course, in this new mode is the skins. And, and these skins are absolutely top-notch fire. I've noticed this bug. You see this shadow right here on Asher? It's like a scar, but it goes away when you spinner weird thing that i noticed um but yeah these skins are sick juno is adorable this skin just complements her perfectly these little squids man and her slimes are awesome i love them so much 
the Estelle skin really shows her off. Because, uh, like, when you think of Estelle, you think of, like, an empress, a beauty, a model, a strong, cold personality. And it comes out in the story, and it comes out in the skin. I really love the way that the skin portrays her. All the themes just matching is just so good. Ah, it's just wonderful. Dubu's, I would say, is actually the weakest. Um, Dubu's or, or uh, Juliet's, honestly. I love Dubu's. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, I would say, it's the weakest. Um, the reason that I like it more than Juliet's is if you have the rune... Uh, obscura goal animation when it washes over these look like two giant balls hanging down um, when you're standing in the darkness <laughs> which it gives it a 10 out of 10 for me of course my girl asher has a bomb ass skin this is way better than the moist esports skin they were able to find a way to cover her stomach while still not obscuring her abs got a tasteful amount of bust which i think is bigger than her other skins they're like outrageously big in this one um and the shields are dope like there's so much thought into it. You can see how she holds them. You can see that it's, it's the lifeguard medical sign. You can see how it could also be a floaty. It just, the whole theme matches and along with the koi fish uh, look in the back. Like, dude, God, these skins slap hard. Juliet's is actually the weakest in my opinion because uh, the for me, it's the, the onesie. Or I guess it's not a onesie. I don't, I don't know what this kind of swimsuit is. The swimsuit, it, it's like blended in with her skin mesh. Um, you see the separation between the suit, her skin, and the lifeguard, the, the life preserver? I wish they would have done a little bit with this, because it looks like it's painted onto her. Um, which is why this is the weakest skin, in my opinion. It just, when I look at it, it like, the colors are beautiful, the punch glove is, you know, it, it's alright. It's just the punch glove, and uh, the goggles and snorkel and stuff. It doesn't hit like the others. It feels uninspired compared to these like these slap really hard the shadows on here make it seem like this clothing is raised off of her even even here uh where it is skin tight and uh, i don't know I, it, it missed a little bit for me here but that's all right that's all right and to transition over to the striker pass they've already sped up the striker pass because they acknowledged that it was too slow uh, and i have to say what's in the striker pass is fucking value look look at this value this skin is bomb this is a bomb ass skin you get a, it, this is a recolor, but I know a lot of people that love this skin. There's a lot of people that I talk to that actually prefer this skin over her other ones, which I think is crazy, but this is a bomb skin. You get all this splash, you get all these emotes, you get these goalie things, these, you get multiple skins that are fire. X's skin, fire. This is my favorite skin in the game, hands down. This shit is hilarious. I love that they put him in a speedo and gave him a huge bulge. Honestly, the sharks, the hair, everything this, x's is perfect i fucking love x's and then you go and look at you're like oh well that's amazing you go look at fucking zentaros look at this dude look at this tell me that this isn't value value in an actual fucking battle pass like this emote you know all the edgies like me are fucking pulling this out and look at the final skin man look at it man it's so good oh my god it gets me pumped look at him this, the hair, the color, the black and the white, the symbols, the, it's just the mask, every, the, dude, oh, it's so good. And then, you know, you get another nice little gully thing. Uh, the emotes are amazing. No, I can't wait to pull this one. I can't. It's going to be so funny. Battle Pass is value. It's actually amazing. They give you shit. They give a shit about you. Like, it's so nice. And it's 120 days, um, which sucks for me. They, they, it was originally like 52 days. I think the Summer Splash event's 51. I was hoping that the Striker Pass would be 51, like it. But, you know, it is what it is. They got long seasons, but they're quality. If this is what they're going to deliver with every season, I'm okay with long seasons. So, uh, on to some more technical stuff. They did some adjustments for Asher's hitbox, which feel great. I'm really happy about that. Her hitbox feels a lot better on her dash. She actually feels wider. I would like to see them look at Dubu and consider maybe widening his role a little bit um, because now Asher's feels great. Asher's primary still feels lacking in a lot of scenarios. If you're not really versed in her and you're not walking up on them, uh, the cone can really throw you off. The other thing is they uh, they nerfed and buffed some items. And for me personally, I like them overall. Prime time, I think, was a great nerf. I think they may have overtuned it a little bit. Maybe reduce hits by... 5% not 10. I get you get a whole nother ability. So that's great You're doubling up your damage taking away 5% whatever. Uh, I think primetime is actually fine where it is for me The one that I really think they over nerfed was stacks 
I think the way they went about the nerf was wrong. Personally, would have increased it to 150, maybe 200, 250 stacks, and just adjusted the values accordingly. Um, what they did is they really nerfed the speed on it. Stacks on stacks isn't heavily prioritized that much. A that nerf along with the nerf to momentum boots really hurts speed for a goalie. It, uh, it really blows. But, you know, I'll take it. I could always make adjustments in the future. And despite popular opinion, uh, I know most people don't like that rapid fire was buffed up as hard, hard as it was from 33 to 40%. Uh, but I personally like it. I, I like the emphasis on rapid fire in contrast to prime time. Now on to the last thing. This is going to be the most controversial topic. I don't like the new maps. The maps are like, okay, so I love them in normals. I love the maps in a vacuum. The maps are awesome. In competitive, they don't hold a place in my opinion. And I hope in the future they hold more of a... And, and if they have, you know, no disrespect to any OD employees. You guys are amazing. Uh, and I, I respect and love you guys, but please hold more regard towards the balance of the maps um, and what makes ranked exciting. It is a battle between two foes, and this is just my philosophy, a battle between two foes and a test of skill. My rank, to me, quantifies me as a skillful player. Uh, and that's how I value myself. Outside of the game, obviously not, right? Don't let a video game rank determine how you feel about yourself. It doesn't matter. But in the game, when I am playing ranked, this is how I value myself and the people I play around me is based on our rank, right? And if it's not based on skill and instead that the environmental hazards are really assisting in making a lot of those goals, it doesn't feel as good. Now, I respect that on uh, Gates of Obscura, the idea is that you're, you know, the more flexible you are, the more you're thinking about the map, the more dynamic, then the better the player, right? But in reality, the side teleporters that are on the bumper is too strong. They are awkward. The forward struggle to, to dribble off of them. The map really doesn't encourage dribbling whatsoever. It's quite large and the walls are teleporters. So dribbling is strange, so you have to pass route through middle, and passing is already weak. I'm primarily a solo queuer, and I watch my two forwards struggle to pass, and they struggle on that map, and therefore uh, I tend to try and always carry as the goalie. Now, I'm not saying that goalie should have all the power to carry the game, but on that map specifically, I am so strung out and so strained that I struggle to feel like that I'm having any sort of effect on the game. It feels like what forwards can pull themselves together better. And yes, there are chances that I take shots on the enemy um, barrier. And that is a goalie diff at times. And that does feel good. But in overall, like, actuality between two equal goalies, I don't think it's a healthy map. Now, if it was only horizontal barriers, even if the horizontal barriers were all the way down to the end, that would be okay. Um, it's just those, those, those vertical ones, I just think they gotta go. And that's just my personal opinion. There's a lot of people that love the map. There's a lot of people that are goalies that love the map. So just, just my personal opinion. Um, as for Inky Splash Zone, I really, really, really wish that they had learned from the Aunt City complaints. The Aunt City barrier is a pain in the absolute ass. Granted, I worked my way to Challenger off those maps and I, I still love them, but the barrier being so humongous is such a pain. I've only found success on Imi on that map so far, uh, and I reserve all my cooldowns to only go back and forth around the goal barrier because when the enemy walks up, because there's ultimately always going to be a breakaway, they have so much space to shoot on me, uh, so I have to hold abilities. And you know what? If that's the way that they want some maps, then fine. Uh, honestly, I do believe they should make a triangle wedge and jam it in the middle of the goal barrier and separate the goal barrier to two sides. That way, if somebody is pressing, they still have that option and they have multiple angles when one barrier falls. I think that's the solution. I think it was the solution on City as well because you can still pass play around that and the goalie can't cover it all. It just makes it a little bit easier. I think right now it's a little ridiculous, but hey, if it stays the way it is, that's not my main complaint. My main complaint is the water hazard. As you guys know, when your barrier falls, the enemy gets a water spout that blasts through the center of the map, killing anybody it touches instantly, unless it's yours. It separates the map in two. Your team has to, as a group, think about how to position for it just in case. And the map is already so large that you need both your forwards all the way forward. So whenever a loose core scenario happens, 
they usually get cut off from their goalie. And because the enemies can walk through it, what happens is they activate it, get a breakaway, and it's pretty much, like if the forwards are competent, a guaranteed goal. One person will a position right in the top corner, um, right where the core gets pushed to and hits off the, the wall, and they can strike it in immediately. So a good goalie has to stand there and if, if somebody walks up. But then the core will rebound if he doesn't touch it and bounce into the center area of this pie that's been sliced by the middle. And if another forward is there, he can easily just hit it in because you're too far up and they just nerf speed this patch. So goalie's got double whammied. That is a pretty unwinnable scenario. There are so many angles, and it's so close to the goal, one of the angle shots is, that predicting or reacting is incredibly difficult. I believe that each map should have a healthy dose of, if you can't react, you should be able to um, predict, and if you can't predict, it should be a reaction scenario. And I think that the they just overtuned it. This whole event is overtuned to hate goalies. Maybe some goalie gear buffs, to compensate would be nice but then they'd be overpowered on other maps i have to say so something to think about it's definitely a map design issue and uh that's my thoughts on the whole thing uh what do you think about the event i loved it i wouldn't change it for the world i would change the maps but if changing the maps would degrade the rest of the experience i don't want the ma maps changed like i had such a blast i'm having such a blast this has been the most fun I've had with the game. I had a whole big script that I've been alluding to in all the end of my videos. I'm going to be, I'm not scrapping it. I'm putting it on hold slightly. I need voice actors for it. Um, so I might actually hire out people from Fiverr to do that. And I'm going to instead work on my new series. It's going to be called Omega Strikers Striker Spotlights. Or it's just going to be like um, Striker Spotlights, stuff like that. And uh, the first video is going to be on Juliet. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to work my way down. And what the spotlight's gonna entail is just their lore. I'm gonna cover each character one at a time. So I know I kind of covered it before in videos, but I realized I had no cohesive lore on each individual character, nor a cohesive timeline lore on all of Omega Strikers. So that's something I'm gonna be working on. And uh, hopefully you guys will be there to watch it. And hopefully I can make something good enough that is worthy of your time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And on your way down there, please strike that like button and maybe consider subscribing i would like to become an od partner that would be awesome it would allow me to work with them more to give you guys better content i appreciate you guys see you out there on the striker field peace